international success coach and noted author Constance Arnold delivers life-changing strategies through her own spiritual practices as well as with best-selling authors and experts she interviews. Think, Believe, and Manifest is specially designed to empower your mind and your words to work for you and to bring about the life you've been dreaming of. And now, here's Constance Arnold. Well, hello everyone and welcome to the Law of Attraction Radio Network. And of course, I am Constance Arnold, the host of the Think, Believe, and Manifest talk show. And today, I am broadcasting live with just a little touch of Southern flavor from magnificent Atlanta, Georgia. I'm so grateful that you've joined me today from all over the world. My goodness, from Asia, from Africa, from South America, from Europe, from Canada, you know that if you're listening to this show that it is no accident and guess what? The Spirit of God has attracted you here so that you can receive uh, the energy, the faith, the inspiration, the insight and the revelation that you've been praying for possibly or that you desire so that you can begin living an abundant prosperous and purposeful life and you know that is certainly the life that God desires for you well how are you doing I hope that you are having a great week uh, you might be having a cup of coffee it might be early morning as you're listening uh, to this recording or possibly um, you might be just waking up from an afternoon nap by the way I take a nap almost every day or it might be evening you might be relaxing but whatever time it is it is the right time for you to really hear truth well, uh, I have had a great week. Let me see what's been going on here in Atlanta. It's been a pleasant week, about 60 degrees. And uh, I am on a 10-day detox, green uh, drink detox. And I think this is day seven for me because at the end of every year, I do some sort of detox. So this year, I chose to do a, a green drink detox. And basically, it's where I drink uh, three smoothies a day. And of course, I can eat one healthy meal if that's what I desire to do. And I take all kinds of supplements. So needless to say, it's been very interesting. And uh, But I'm excited about it and just wanted to share that with you. Well, I have a great show for you today. We're going to be talking about how you can consciously create wealth. How many of you would be interested in that? Let me see your hands all over the world. I can see them. And my very special guest is Richard Harper. And uh, his book is awesome. And man, are you in for a treat. But let me share just some announcements with you. I think I want to begin with, I am a one of 21 experts that's participating in the power of story summit and basically it's 21 experts and we're sharing about how you can number one begin to uh, define your story number two market your story number three add value to others while you're making money so you have 21 experts and guess what it's free and you're going to receive 21 different gifts so I want you to go to the power of story summit.com and just register it ends on December the December the 11th and just listen to all of these phenomenal expert experts you know you never know uh, what God's going to use because all it takes is one word from God to shift and change your business shift and change your life shift and change the love that's in your life so I wanted to remind you of that and additionally Remember to go to Law of Attraction Radio Network because Jules has really created a phenomenal Law of Attraction magazine with 
wonderful experts, including Jack Canfield. All of these people have written articles. Yours truly has written an article, Joe Vitale. And Pam Grout is on the cover. And, you know, she was on my show where she shared of the power of your thinking and how your thoughts really create your reality. So go on the network and just check that out. Uh, you need to invest in yourself and get that and read that and get a revelation of that. And lastly, I wanted to remind you about my coaching. Of course, you guys already know that I've coached, trained, or spoken to over 10,000 people during my 25-year career. I'm a licensed psychotherapist and a coach, and you've heard all of my clients share their stories with you. So the best Christmas gift that you could give to yourself would be to invest in yourself. And my prices, my coaching prices will be changing beginning January the 1st. But I have decided that anyone who purchases a coaching package in 2014, that they can take those sessions over at the prices that they paid for in 2014 to 2015. Additionally, if you are really searching for love my ebook on attracting genuine love into your life with the accompanying um, attracting love affirmation and I must tell you that everybody who purchases my attracting love affirmation CDs said Constance you sound so sultry but really I'm going to tell you that the spirit was really on me that day when I recorded that CD and, and uh, the mp3 so you can go online you can get it now you can begin working in the book uh, that ebook is easy um, I believe that after working with so many women and men I really and my own mistakes by the way I really have a clear understanding of love and relationships and uh, what it takes to attract love in your life because I'm a living example of of that so that's fulfillingyourpurpose.com and of course you can email me at constance at fulfillingyourpurpose.com but you know whenever I'm not teaching I like to give you a quick tip for the week and so this is my tip for the week uh, my tip for the week is to focus in on one intention one goal between now and the end of the year I think we have about three weeks uh, when this show airs about three weeks between that time, this time, and the end of the year. I want you to choose one goal, and I want you to take small baby steps. You know, sometimes I believe that we try to take gigantic steps that are not sustainable, and, and we're not consistent with it. And so the question that I ask all of my clients is, what can you do? If you're busy, if you're a single mom, if you have a busy life, uh, you might not be able to do certain things, but what are some things that that you can begin to do in the one area that you've chosen to really focus in on between now and the end of the year. You know, I believe that uh, one of the main reasons that there's not a lot of manifestation in the lives of people is they're focusing in on too many things. So let me give you an example of what that might look like. Uh, how you can take small baby steps. Let's just say I have a client that I'm working with and she has allowed me to share this and she's a single mom with three children, doesn't have a lot of time. I said, what can you do? So we decided that she could walk 12 minutes a day. Uh, she read somewhere that 12 minutes is a great beginning point. So we decided that she's going to do that five days a week that she's going to give up one extra soda because she drinks a lot of sodas, a lot of Cokes. I didn't ask her to give them all up because I understand that when you continue to take those small baby steps, that she will begin to shift and change and transform on the inside and then her behavior on the outside will change. And then she's going to drink two extra glasses of water a day. That's all I'm asking her to do. So what's going to happen in her life? What's going to happen is one day, instead of walking 12 minutes, she might feel like walking 15 minutes. And then another day, uh, she may feel like walking 17 minutes. And so those small baby steps steps expand uh, into large, gig gigantic, uh, consistent rituals. Can you see that? Okay, 
another person that I'm working with, we're talking about how you can set your intention and put your attention on this one goal between now and the end of the year. What are some small baby steps that you can take? I have a client and she's just like, Constance, I'm sick of my job and I'm just, it, the, the commute is too long, etc. And so I said, let's come up with three things. So the strategies that she's doing is she is so busy and she works long hours because she is in management that she's paying somebody else to do her resume. I think that's a great investment. I mean, it's not a lot of money, but she's paying somebody else to rewrite her resume. That's one small baby step. Number two, she's getting on LinkedIn. So she's building her profile. Why is she getting on LinkedIn? Because there are 1 million recruiters that come on LinkedIn. LinkedIn every day looking for someone just like you. So she is progressively building her profile on LinkedIn and she is connecting with people and asking people if she can connect to them, etc. And then she is spending five minutes a day visualizing or feeling or seeing herself or being grateful for her new career, her new position, even before she receives that. So these are the small baby steps that she can implement in her life on a daily basis between now and the end of the year. So your assignment is to make a decision about what's the one thing that I really want to focus on bef between now and the end of the year. Secondly, what are my three small baby steps that I'm going to take every day toward that intention? And, and then thirdly, how can I be accountable to someone else? You know, maybe it might be your husband or your girlfriend or your boyfriend or, or, or someone else that you can say, these are the three baby steps that I'm doing and just really have an accountability partner. Okay, so email me and let me know what your intentions are. We'd love to hear from you. And that's Constance at fulfillingyourpurpose.com. So guess what? I'm going to be right back after these quick commercials. You're listening to Law of Attraction Radio Network, enhancing the well-being of millions of listeners worldwide. LOARadioNetwork.com is heard through 25 different internet radio stations, as well as iTunes Radio, Stitcher.com, and our mobile apps. The Law of Attraction Radio Network, your trusted source of daily inspiration at LOARadioNetwork.com. Are you ready to create the life of your dreams? Imagine partnering with a coach that can help you manifest extraordinary success. Constance Arnold has been a licensed therapist and coach for over 25 years and has successfully worked with more than 10,000 clients. Constance will help you clarify your goals, eliminate self-defeating beliefs, and create strategic plans to manifest your dreams. Constance offers a variety of coaching packages, pay-as-you-go, half-yearly, and yearly coaching. Contact Constance today for guaranteed coaching that produces extraordinary and permanent results. For more information, go to fulfillingyourpurpose.com. Hi there, Jules here. I want to make sure you know about our incredible new online magazine called The Science Behind the Law of Attraction. You can view it on your iPad, tablet, or even your computer, which means you can read it before you go to sleep every night or whenever you need to take a break. Go to lawofattractionmagazine.net and purchase your copy today for only $3.99. You can even purchase past issues. That's lawofattractionmagazine.net. I know you are going to love it. Well, I am back and I hope that you enjoyed those wonderful commercials and Guess what? I am so excited about the show today. And uh, somebody emailed me from Australia and said, Constance, you're always excited. And guess what? You are exactly uh, correct because I know that the Spirit of God always leads me to just the right expert, the right 
offer that I really believed is designed just for you at this particular time. So my very special guest today is Richard R. Harper. He is an award-winning author, life coach, and pastor. Uh, his inaugural book, Consciously Wealthy, Developing a Rich Mind to Make Power Moves, has been honored with three liter literary awards within the last year of publication, and isn't that amazing? He is an enlightened, spirit-filled individual with a keen sense of the mind uh, and just all of these wonderful universal laws that govern prosperity and wealth. Uh, working a number of years as a professional development trainer and ordained minister, he has a proven ability to teach people how to unlock themselves to manifest abundance. And uh, I have read his book and I have been moved. I have been immersed. And you guys know I read a book a week, but I have been reading and rereading and really uh, absorbing and trying to digest just a powerful information that's in this book. Uh, he is the founding pastor of Prevailing Life Kingdom Center in good old Houston, Texas. So Richard Harper, welcome to the Law of Attraction Radio Network. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be with you today. Well, Richard, what can I say? Your book has really taken me by storm. It's not a lot that takes me by storm. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so just tell our listeners a little bit about who you are, and then we're going to get started with some great principles from your book. Well, thank you so much again for having me here uh, on your show today and all of your listeners. Uh, we just release uh, blessings to you. Uh, my background, of course, um, as, as you stated, was in professional development, uh, training, and, of course, as an ordained minister. I have been studying, I guess you would say, universal principles of prosperity for a very long time. Um, my grandmother would receive letters in the mail from one particular church. I believe it was the, the Unity Church. Mm -hmm. And as a child, I would pick those letters up and I would read those letters. And it's just amazing how those letters and words about healing and God within us, God in us, as us, through us, stuck with me um, throughout my life, and I really didn't realize the principles that I had been using and, and this divine connection. Uh, I've been a spiritual person really most of my life. I grew up in a you know highly spiritual family, and so these principles have just been a part of me and a part of my life. I found myself in Houston, Texas, after uh, the company I had worked with for 10 years, at my 21st birthday with that company, believe it or not, working mm -hmm. at that company out of college. After one month after my 10th anniversary, I was escorted out of the building, laid off. Mm -hmm. And after I had been promoted and relocated to Houston, Texas, here I am standing under a tree with all of my things with me, and it's like what's left for me next. So, you know, trying to go back into the employment arena as far as nine to five and do all of those things that we do after we graduate from college or whatever, I began to realize that was not my path. Mm -hmm. um, it wasn't the path that God had uh, for me that he intended for me. So in this time, I began to allow God to express himself through me. And over that period of time, uh, I had become more conscious and, and more aware of his presence and how his spiritual laws work and how we interact with those spiritual laws and things began to move and manifest in our life. And so uh, just from one day of being laid off, sitting under a tree, uh, waiting, my car was being serviced that day, so I was waiting for my then fiance, who's my wife now, to pick me up from work. I was sitting there embarrassed, people driving by, looking and mm. pointing and all of this, and like, oh my God, this happened to him. But that was the greatest experience I could have ever had. And it was through that um, experience that Consciously Wealthy uh, was being birthed in me, uh, as I would like to say. And finally got to the place to where I was able to sit down and write Consciously Wealthy. And the book began as a workshop. It was supposed to have been a workshop. I was sitting down, just putting together some notes for a workshop. And before I knew it, I had written four chapters of a book. Mm. 
Um, <laughs> you know, no, that's so, so awesome. constantly. You know, you, you know that, 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 that combination. Yeah, mm-hmm. that just shows you that sometimes our most devastating, seemingly devastating moments are the most difficult and challenging times in our lives. That if we're open to the spirit from that, we can become wealthy in all areas. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and most of the time, it's those expectations that have been placed upon us by other people. And uh, which has built our paradigm. I'm always talking about having that paradigm shift. So you got to go and and shift your paradigm and change all of that and get rid of those expectations and those labels and jackets that others have put upon you and allow yourself to be whom God wants to be through you. So true. I have so many questions for you. So let's get started. Okay, Okay, Richard. So in one chapter, you talk about successes from the inside and you talk about Jeremiah 29, 11. What does that mean? Success is from the inside. I believe that everything in our world, everything that we create, it comes from within us. The thing that I love about consciousness is, is that um, it puts the responsibility back in your hands. Um, that's what I believe, uh, that's what I'm trying to express in Chapter 1, is, is that when you look around your life and you look at your experience and everything that's happening around you right now, your bank account, all of these things are the results of what's inside of you, the thoughts you have, the feelings that you're holding, the attitudes, the opinions, um, you know, in one word, your paradigm. It's all from your paradigm. So Jeremiah 29 and 11 says that God has great plans for us, plans to prosper us and uh, uh, for peace and to bring us to that expected end. And so we have all of these plans, but we never walk out those plans, you know, and it's frustrating to hear all of this uh, uh, about these wonderful plans God has for me, but then I never see them. So there has to be some changes that begin to, to take place inside. And I like to say there has to be a mental rearrangement. There's no difference between a poor person's mind and a rich person's mind except for one thing. It is the arrangement of their thoughts mm. and how they see things. And so we've got to... Uh, people must rearrange their thoughts and uh, uh, change the way that they think and the way that they see themselves and their situation. And, you know, don't focus on the lack. Don't focus on poverty. Don't focus on the sickness. Focus on plenty. Focus on prosperity. Focus on the abundance. You know, focus on uh, there's so many blessings in the Bible, and I've come from that good old church experience, down home Southern church experience, and you know we spent so much time talking about what we couldn't do and mm-hmm. what we couldn't have and what we couldn't touch, and it was rarely that we could hear about what we could have, and then when they talked about what we could have, we had to die to get it. So mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, it, it's when you get to heaven. So I don't believe that that's the way it's supposed to be. I believe heaven is a state of mind. I do believe in heaven being a physical place, but I do believe a part of heaven is is uh, is a state of mind that when you let go of all those expectations and let go of phenomena and, and material phenomena, what have you, and just align yourself with the uh, – positive, abundant vibrations of God, then these things can emanate and manifest through your life. Wow. Just just, just that one um, insight that you talked about, just shifting and changing paradigms is so powerful. So you mentioned consciousness. So, yes. so, so what is consciousness and, and is it biblical? Consciousness is who we are. We are awareness. Consciousness means awareness, and that is exactly who we are. And yes, because God is consciousness. Um, he said right in Jeremiah twenty nine eleven, for I know the thoughts that I have for you. That is consciousness, you know, okay. and it's us having that sense of awareness, and that's why I believe that uh, consciousness is very biblical. I don't believe it's New Age jargon or is something that will take you out of the Bible or take you out of the scriptural text, if you will. Uh, the word of the Lord even tells us in uh, 1 Peter 5 and 8, it says, 
The message Bible says, keep a cool head, stay alert. The devil is poised to pounce and would like nothing better than to catch you napping. Keep your guard up. That's what consciousness is, is you uh, being involved in your life, in your world, being involved in your thoughts, being the observer of your thoughts, having an understanding of how you feel and why you feel what you feel. I was taking a Tai Chi class and the instructor said to us, the reason why the movements are slow is because anything you uh, you do fast, your mind doesn't have to be involved in the process. Mm. So when things are done slowly, we did the movement slowly so that our mind could connect with our spirit and with our breathing. Everything came into an alignment, and that's what consciousness is all about, and it's very biblical. It is who we are. We are spirit beings having a physical experience, and the only way we can apply the principles of God or the universal laws of God is through our mind. And the mind isn't who we are, but it's a tool that we have to use to apply those laws and those principles within our lives. Wow, powerful, amazing. So what what are the three levels of consciousness? Uh, The first level is uh, consciousness, which is you being awake, just Mm -hmm. being alert and knowing where you are. And then we have the subconscious which is on the surface of your consciousness. That's where things have been stored in your life, your memories, your reactions, your feelings. uh, um, All of those things are stored there. Um, Events are always working in the present tense and the subconscious. And then outside of the conscious and the subconscious, outside of that is the superconscious, which people give the superconscious many names, divine intelligence, source, or, you know, spirit. I like to call the superconsciousness God. That is the God mind. That's our divine mind. And most people live. We hear a lot of teaching and a lot of uh, motivational and self-help books deal with the conscious and subconscious. But rarely do those books or, or seminars, workshops, go into the spiritual mind and us accessing that spiritual mind, which is our in, inner genius. Um, and so that's why we, we talk about the third level of consciousness being the superconscious. And the superconscious is outside of our consciousness and it's outside of our subconscious mind. Wow. So, so you said, I read in your book, you said your subconscious creates your reality. Yes. How does that work for someone who's listening who might be in a third world country or or maybe they've experienced downsizing like you did and right now their life is just mired with seemingly lack and limitation. So how would their subconscious or how can we begin to shift our subconscious so we could create a different reality than what we are experiencing? Okay. The subconscious mind is where all of our past events, memories are stored. It's also where our body monitors all of our functions like heart rate, blood pressure. All of these things take place in the subconscious. When we are sleeping, the subconscious takes over. You know, that's how we know to roll over at night. That's how we know to breathe or, or, you know, to move in our sleep or we respond to dreams or what have you. All of these things take place in the subconscious. But because the subconscious mind is the place where past learning experiences are stored, we have so many things that are stored within us subconsciously. So consciously, you can want something really, really bad, and you can really determine or decide consciously that you want something or you deserve something. But subconsciously, there is a memory, there's a thought, there's an idea that is stored there in the subconscious mind that uh, causes a block. And so what you get is is the complete opposite Mm -hmm. of what it is that you want because the subconscious mind only works in the present tense. The subconscious stores the memories, but all of those memories are like present tense memories. That's why you can think about something and you can get a feeling as if it happened like it was the first day that it ever happened. Someone may have passed and you were so hurt by that, so devastated, and every day you think about it, it takes you back to that moment 
in time when you first received that disappointing news or something great may have happened, the birth of a child or some uh, accomplishment, and you think about it and it takes you back to that moment, the nostalgia of that moment. All of that is stored there in the subconscious. The subconscious mind doesn't determine between what we like or dislike, what we want or do not want, the subconscious mind only stores within it those things that we place in it by applying intense feeling to that. So anything that you apply an intense feeling or an emotion that uh, with that thought, if you attach a good feeling, which is a vibration, with that thought, then it goes into that subconscious. If you apply a bad feeling or a negative feeling like fear, depression, or whatever with a particular thought, guess what? It goes within that subconscious. And the subconscious is the doer of our mind, which means it's always working to bring um, into creation or manifestation what it is that we want in our life or, as I like to say, in our experience. So if you have something stored subconsciously that you are a winner, and you know what, these things work for people every day and they don't know how it's happening. Some people don't know why they're wildly successful, why they always win, why good things always happen to them. They absolutely don't know why. Some people are in great places. There are people in Forbes magazine that can never tell you how they got to Forbes magazine. But somewhere subconsciously, they had it in their mind that they would be wildly successful, that they would be able to drive what they want to drive, have what they want to have, do what they want to do. They had an idea that they would own a company, uh, uh, be in the White House or what have you. And through time, through processes of time, it happened. Events and opportunities happened to validate what they had stored within them subconsciously. So we got to know that subconsciously either we have a a winning mentality or we have a loser mentality stored within us subconsciously. And your subconscious mind is just like uh, the, the, the programming of a computer. I describe it in the book. It's like that operating system. Whatever you put in it is what it's going to do. That's what's going to come out of it. Whatever you put in that subconscious is what will come out of that subconscious. So the subconscious mind is always, and when we talk about thoughts, uh, we think in terms of pictures and images. So these thoughts are not stored in the subconscious mind as words, but they're stored in the subconscious mind as images, as pictures. And so the subconscious is always working to bring to creation the images that we hold within it. Wow. I'm going to say that backwards. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so, Richard, let's get down to just real everyday life. So if someone desires more money mm-hmm. and, and they've been thinking and feeling fear, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know how I'm going to pay my mortgage. Mm-hmm. How can they begin to sh- shift their thinking and their feeling, which is going to create different images of abundance, mm-hmm. of prosperity, et cetera? And thus, that's what will be experienced in their lives. What should they do? One of the first things you've got to do is, is number one, is you got to make a decision. The first mm-hmm. thing that they must do is make a decision that they will stick by. If you decide today that I'm going to be rich, wealthy, or if you don't want to be extremely rich, you don't have to be extremely rich. You don't have to be a, be a millionaire to have an exciting life. Um, If you just want to be comfortable or you just want to feel good with knowing that at the end of the month your bills are paid on time or either they've paid off completely and you can live debt-free, it first starts with uh, making that decision. And the second thing that I always uh, employ is is there are two things. is affirmations. I use affirmations daily. Uh, One of the affirmations I use is uh, by... uh, Catherine Ponder, where she says, everything and everybody prospers me now, and I prosper everything and everybody. That's an affirmation 
that I always use uh, for myself. And there's another that she has about I release worn out things and worn out conditions and worn out relationships. And I move forward into happy new experiences where I belong. You must affirm these things because affirming it means you make it solid. But also to change the image, you've got to use the power of your imagination. And God gave us the power of imagination. And we can project ourselves into any reality we want to be in through our imagination. And you can imagine or image yourself being happy, being whole. You can image yourself, uh, you know, being married, successful. You can imagine yourself being thin, whatever you want to be, being healthy. You can do that. And what you imagine, you must begin to affirm it. The other thing I would suggest is is define yourself as being, doing, and having what it is that you want to do, be, and have, and don't allow anyone else to write your definition. Whoever writes your definition has control of your outcome. Mm. So you must define yourself as being, doing, and having anything and everything that you want in your life. That's your definition. So you cannot look at the realities. Uh, I shared this with my church. Uh, The the Bible says, shun the very appearance of evil. Now, the traditional teaching is, is that means we don't want anybody to see us doing anything that's morally incorrect. We want to always be seen as good. Well, I interpret that scripture differently because the appearance in the Greek comes from the word I know, and that's what we get the word video from. So it's Sean's very appearances are the very image of evil. Well, Constance, I think poverty is evil. Sure. I think uh, sickness is evil. I think you being unhappy is evil. I think you not being successful in life is evil. So those images are first in my mind before they're anywhere else that are in my mind. So we, you got to ignore those images that, that's coming in front of you that are evil. And what is evil? Anything that's causing you to be unsuccessful or unhappy or to be miserable in life, that is evil. Anything that's taking your finances from you, I say that thing is evil. And so you get away from the very appearance of that evil. So in your mind, you change your image. You see yourself, whatever, five-bedroom home, whatever you need to do, Rolls Royce, meat, Coke, whatever you need to do. Get yourself some images of it. And it's not just about taking pictures and putting them on the wall. And I know we do these vision boards and stuff like that. I don't have time to take vision boards across the country with me. So I need these things to be within my mind Mm -hmm. and use the power of my subconscious mind and bury these things deep within my subconscious mind so they become a part of me. And when they become a part of you, they will become your reality. You can't wait until you get it to think like you have. You don't wait to become a millionaire to start thinking like a millionaire. You start thinking like a millionaire when you when you don't have anything but 50 cents in your back pocket. You've got to begin to think uh, in those terms. You don't think as if you're completely healed and healthy and without disease in your body when the doctor gives you a report that says nothing else is there. No, you start thinking healthy. You walk healthy. You eat healthy. You make healthy lifestyle choices before it happens. And we call that assuming the consciousness of what it is that you want to be. So that's what we got to begin to do to change what's going on in the subconscious mind because your consciousness is your wealth, your awareness. You know, it begins with what you are aware of. What are you conscious of? If you're conscious of fear, you're only going to have more opportunities and events in your life to be fearful. If your consciousness is and your awareness is is that you will never have a mate and be happy in life with a mate in life, then you're going to continue to get letdowns and disappointments from relationships and from dating or what have you. If it's poverty, if that is your consciousness, that's your awareness, that's all you're going to continue to receive in your life. So you shift all of that by changing your awareness. So what I see around me is not who I am. I don't care where I am or whatever state I may find myself being. Nothing has control of my reality but me. 
what I decide and what I choose is in my reality is what my reality is. Amazing. Well, if you're just joining me, I'm speaking with Arthur Richard R. Harper, and he is the author of Consciously Wealthy, Developing a Rich Mind to Make Power Moves. Where do I where do I go with you? I mean, it's so uh, powerful and you know and, and so awesome. So, you know, I was thinking about how I found you. Obviously, in your thinking, you saw your book as being successful and and all of that. And what happened, uh, Richard, was someone gave me a Kindle gift card for my birthday, and I was on Amazon, and I'm like, what can I download? And I, I was an, 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 uh, downloading some things by Never Goddard, and, you know, and somehow I found your book, and it says, you know, look on the inside. I'm like, hmm. And once I downloaded that book, I believe that because of your consciousness that I was drawn to download your book. And once I read it, I'm like, where is this man? I am going to hunt him down <laughs> like a hound dog. And I believe that it had to be your consciousness that drew me. I believe that. You know, here lately, it's just been, that's been my meditation. It's been my affirmation. You know, I put my hand in my uh, on my book. I hold copies of my book in my hand, and I speak to it. Mm-hmm. And I imagine I see TV shows, talk shows, radio shows. I see it all. You know, I see this book being global around the world. And it's not just about seeing it concerts. It's feeling good about it. Okay. You know, these are the things that I feel good about. And uh, someone said to me the other day, they said, wow, it takes a lot of faith to be in business for yourself. And I said, it takes faith, but more than that, it takes ingenuity. Because you've mm-hmm. always, and that's what the superconscious comes in, uh, mm-hmm. that will give you the, the information and strategies you need so that you can be relevant. And um, that's a great example mm-hmm. because you're absolutely correct. Um, it's out of my consciousness. This is how I feel you know, about the book, Conscious of Wealthy won three awards in the first year being published. And, um, you know, that was just amazing. I went to uh, just the last two awards were uh, won uh, by the Christian, Lit- were awarded by the Christian Literary Awards. And I won both awards in my category, you know, for Christian living. And how, you know, how does that happen? And even the founder of the awards program was saying, okay, you know, this consciousness is really real for you because you came in here and won both books in your category. Mm -hmm. The only other person that did that was Bishop T.D. Jakes' daughter. Wow. Amazing. Sarah Jakes won both in her category. And so you 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 see it, you feel it, you're speaking it, you you're using your I am affirmations, you're acting like you have it now because you do have it. You 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 do have it now, and your subconscious is really creating your reality around your book right now. Absolutely, absolutely. And this, you know, I poured myself into consciously wealth. This is me. If anyone comes to our church on Sunday morning, this is what you hear. This is all I talk about um, in our church and in our congregation. And we've had individuals who have written their own books, who publish books. We have several individuals. Our church is only a year old. Uh, business executives within our church and others who have started nonprofit organizations and what have you. And this is what I teach every Sunday morning, even at the church. Uh, As a life coach, this is how I coach. I coach from the realm of consciousness. Mm -hmm. Um, The thing about my coaching is is I don't get to keep my clients because they become successful. And (laughs) they start reaching those goals, then they feel like they don't need me anymore. So, you know, that's the thing about it. Uh, It even made me think about Catherine Ponder was talking about when she wrote her first book that, Everybody involved, I think she kept losing housekeepers Mm -hmm. because they were starting businesses and secretaries were, you know, starting businesses and things were happening. So this is what happens, you know, even that's been my experience with Consciously Wealthy. So true. And so, Richard, um, 
you know, I'm very moved by your book, and I'm going to really strongly encourage all of my listeners, invest in yourself and in your life, and, and go on Amazon. I'm going to have him in a few minutes share where you can get the book and, and, and purchase the book. So, so lastly, talk about the Christ connection, or how is God involved in, in, in us manifesting wealth consciously? God, first of all, isn't outside of us. God is in us. Mm -hmm. uh, he is in us. Luke 17, 20 and 21, Jesus said it himself. He says that the kingdom of God is within you. It doesn't come by observation. It's not here. It's not there. It's within you. And I believe the success of Jesus Christ on earth, earthly ministry, is, is that he always affirmed that I and my father are one. Mm. What has happened to us in our religious experiences is we have separated ourselves from God, and that's what religion is, is religion is nothing more than man's ideas or man-made methods to reconnect with God. There is no reconnection with God because God is within you. You are connected with God. Now, we must... Uh, make a conscious decision, and we must become aware of this divine connection that we have, have already with God. Uh, when we even look at Jesus Christ, and one thing that I talk about um, in the book with Jesus Christ is, is that Jesus was, if you look at Jesus as the man, Jesus Christ is the embodiment of the perfect man. He was uh, perfect in his mind because he was consciously unified and connected with God, who is his source. And God is our source. And so we have got to understand that when we talk about Jesus as the person, Jesus was the, how can I put it, Jesus, if you look at Jesus as the person, the intellectual man, look at him as the intellectual man, as the ground, and you look at Christ as the seed of truth, that you will put in the ground, and you know a tree by the fruit that it bears. So when we're talking about Jesus Christ, Christ is that truth, and that's that foundational principle that through the indwelling Christ that we can be consciously aligned with God and we can operate through divine mind. And Jesus represents the life of where the divine mind of God operates through. So the source of all of our strength of supply is God, is spirit. When man was created in the Garden of Eden, he was just a body. He was a shell. Adam was a shell. He had no life. But there the Bible says that God blew breath in his nostril, and the Ruach in the Hebrew, that breath is the spirit of God. And he instantly became a living soul, which means that he became a living, active mind. That's what he became. He became an active intelligence. So it's spirituality that I believe uh, motivates and activates us in our thinking abilities and how we manifest and what we create out of our life. So when we talk about Christ, Jesus Christ, so that's Jesus Christ in principle. That's who he is in principle. He's the intellectual mind, the intellectual man that has the very seed of truth within him. And that seed of truth, by accepting and acknowledging that truth, now he becomes aligned completely with God here on earth, and he does great exploits for all while he's on earth. And then Jesus said, these works I've done, but greater than these shall you do. So we are supposed to do greater works than even Jesus Christ did on the earth. People in church have a problem when I begin to say, I am Christ, or to say, I am God, because religion has taught us that we don't deserve it, that we are not worthy of it. And Jesus said it all the time, when you see my father, you see me. I, when you see me, you see my father. I am my father of one. You cannot have my father without me. This is the same way we should affirm about our lives. If you want to see God, turn around and look at me. You see an expression of God within me. Uh, uh, if you want to touch God, reach over and shake my hand because you can see a tangible expression of God in my life, through my life, 
and asked me, expressing his wealth, his health, his prosperity, his love, his joy, his peace, his deliverance, his holiness, his sanctification, whatever you want to say about it, expressing it all through me. And it happens. Why? Because I acknowledge the Christ mind within me. So this is how I begin to explain Christ in the Bible, taking that religious spin off of Christ, of just saying Christ as a man upon the cross that's just, you know, received this uh, horrible crucifixion. This is why I choose to interpret the scriptures metaphysically, because if you look at the Bible in the literal sense, some, some parts will just not make you happy. I mean, some parts will depress you. But if you begin to look at these metaphysically, which means go under the surface, and begin to interpret these scriptures from a spiritual perspective, then you can understand why it is important to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. I don't believe Jesus came to change our life. He didn't come to change our life. I believe that Jesus Christ came to empower us to create our worlds. That's what God was concerned about, us changing our world and changing our our experience. And that's why... I believe, and I even say in the book, in the very beginning, you tried other philosophies, you tried other teachings, you, you listen to other people, and what they say works as well. I'm not going to say that what other uh, uh, faiths practice don't work. What they practice, they work just as well. But I believe that through Christ's consciousness, this awareness of Christ that it goes beyond um, religion, it goes beyond church affiliation, denomination, it goes far beyond that. I believe it takes us into what I entitled in the book as a kingdom awareness, that we realize we are not of this kingdom, we are the, of another kingdom, and the kingdom of God is not a place, but it's an administration. And we are a part of God's governmental system, and we are a part of the administration of God, and we've been placed here on the earth as channels, and God wants to administer something to society through each and every last one of us. And I believe that Christ allows us to do that. Wow. <laughs> Amazing. I have so many more questions, you know, that I really want to ask you. So mm. I, I've got to ask one more. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. <laughs> so you, you talk about uh, the portals to an open heaven. What yeah. do you mean by that? And, you know, for someone who who may be struggling to really shift and change their thinking, what in the world, how can that translate into the everyday lives of people? Well, first of all, let's stop thinking of heaven right now in this sense of just a physical place, this afterlife. This is our understanding of heaven is that this is an afterlife. No, we're supposed to experience heaven right here on earth before we get to the afterlife. I mean, I don't want to wait to die to start living life. Come on. We're here. We're living. We're moving. and We're breathing. We have a heavenly mindset when we lose focus and start focusing on the limitations of things that are around us, and we get over over the phenomena that takes place around us, and we let go of how we judge situations, and and we uh, 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 are looking at God continually as the source of our supply, knowing that we don't have to know how uh, because we know who and that it is God within us uh, that that works both to will and to do, as the Scripture says. And so I believe that when heaven begins to open us, open over a person's life, that they will begin to have supernatural occurrences in their lives, which is uh, – Something will happen that will supersede that natural experience mm-hmm. where people don't understand how is my business still making money when other businesses are failing in the same industry? How is it that these things that my nonprofit organization is receiving major grants and major supports while others are not receiving support in this area? Or how is it that I'm able to live and function, though I may have sometimes disease in my body and the doctor said that I'm not supposed to be able to do these things but I do these things. I believe that's because heaven has opened in a person's life and we don't realize that many times we're in places that are under what I call a closed heaven 
because of the mindsets of the people, the collective consciousness of the people, and the collective consciousness creates a culture. So you can be in the middle of a culture of closed-minded people, negative people, uninformed people, and they're under a, a hard heaven. When heaven, heaven opens up for us, I believe we have supernatural signs, wonders, healings, miracles, uh, accelerations of things in our lives. Uh, Things will begin to shift, even angelic visitation within our lives. And all of the power that's in heaven and all of the blessings that are in heaven begin to flow freely through your life, your family, ministry, uh, a business organization or whatever. So this is why I took time in the book to begin to line out um, a process that I got out of the book of First Kings, the 18th chapter, of, of uh, a process to cause heaven to open up in a person's life. Wow. So a couple of questions. Uh, I want you to share your information. How can people get your book? How can people who are living in Houston, because if I was in Houston, I would definitely be at your church. How can they uh, find your church and how can they contact you for coaching, speaking, etc.? Wonderful. Everyone can contact me in one place. It's www.richardharperministries.org. www.richardharperministries.org. Or they can contact my office at 832-598-7522. Once again, 832-598-7522. Our church meets every Sunday morning at 10 o'clock, 10 o'clock a.m. We meet at the Holiday Inn Express, uh, located at 12323. West Katy Freeway, Houston, Texas. That's on the west side of Houston, um, just going west of the of the Galleria area. Um, and we're in a great area. We're in the area that's called the Energy Corridor mm. as well. So, you know, that's just the right place, I feel, for a ministry to be. You can also contact me there for coaching. Um, I would love to be your coach and coach you through these principles. I have out-of-the-box coaching. I went through all those coaching courses and had a great coaching teachers, but I promise you I don't coach according to anything that they taught me. Um, I coach you based on the things, a few of the things that you heard me talk about today are the, are the principles that I use in my coaching. Um, I don't like to focus on your why's but I like to focus on you. So we get rid of those whys and we deal with you. Um, God isn't waiting to do anything because everything for you is already done. So that's how you can find me. And also through uh, the website, you can order the book Consciously Wealthy, Developing a Rich Mind to Make Power Moves. You can do it through the website or you can just search for it on um, Amazon.com and uh, through Amazon.com is where you can get the Kindle version of the book as well. Okay. This has been so powerful and I'm so grateful to God for your discipline and, and for the wonderful book that you have created, Richard. It's just very awesome and thank God for you sharing with people all over the world today. Thank you so much for having me. It was a joy. Well, once again, this is Constance Arnold with the Think, Believe, and Manifest talk show. Uh, Remember to visit my website at fulfillingyourpurpose.com and email me at Constance at fulfillingyourpurpose.com and let me know how much this show is shifting and changing your thinking and your lives. I would love to hear about the great manifestations that are happening in your life and so grateful to all of my faithful listeners, all over the world and I guess the thing that I say every week is guess what I love you God loves you and the best is yet to come you better believe it thank you for listening to think believe and manifest Constance will be back next week with another inspirational show for more information Go to fulfillingyourpurpose.com or send Constance an email 
at Constance at fulfillingyourpurpose.com.